Now children, I'll tell you something about cumulative frequency curve. You have done earlier the meaning of cumulative frequency and you are well aware that the cumulative frequency means the added up frequencies. When we go on adding up frequencies, then we get the cumulative frequencies. Okay. Now here we will learn about cumulative frequency curve also known as ogive. Ogive or cumulative frequency curve. This curve ogive that is made on the basis of added up frequency that is why it is known as cumulative frequency curve. Now the meaning says that cumulative frequency of any class is the sum of the frequencies of all classes preceding that class and its own frequency. This is the meaning of cumulative frequency. That means added up frequency. For example, if frequencies are 2, 4, 5, 6, then in that case the added up frequency will be 6, 11, 17, right? This way we go on adding up. So, this says cumulative frequency of any class is the sum of the frequencies of all classes preceding that class. That means sum of the frequencies of all classes preceding that class and the frequency of its own class. This means this is the cumulative frequency which is the addition of 2, 4, 5 and 6. So, this way cumulative frequency we get by adding up all the frequencies and the frequency of its own class, right? Now, there are two ways to add up all the frequencies that is less than method and more than method. In the less than method, we go on adding frequencies beginning from lower limits. This you have done earlier also when I told you what are cumulative frequencies and less than method remember we have done that also and I told you with the example that how do we calculate less than frequencies. Okay? So, less than method we go on adding frequencies beginning from lower limits and we get an upward rising curve called less than ogive. So, in this we add up frequencies beginning from lower limits and the curve what we plot on the basis of these lower limits frequencies then that will be the upward rising curve which is called as less than ogive. In more than method we go on decreasing frequencies beginning from upper limits and we get an a declining curve called more than ogive. So, earlier you have done what is less than and what is more than cumulative frequency. Now, we will see what is less than ogive and more than ogive with the help of an example and diagram. Now, take the example here marks and number of students. I have taken an imaginary example here marks. Suppose in this class interval 0 to 5 there are 4 number of children 5 to 10, 6, 10 to 15, 10 and so on. This is the class interval of marks and this is number of students in each class interval. Okay. Now, for making OGI or cumulative frequency curve, first we have to convert this data into cumulative frequency table form. That means, we convert the data in the form of table showing less than type and here more than more than type right now we convert the data into less than and more than less than type less than 5 because the lower limit here is 0 to 5 so less than 5 how many are there 4 this is the frequency less than 5 there are 4 less than 10 there are 4 plus 6 10 this is the cumulative frequency as you have done earlier. We add up and we get the frequencies this one. Right? Now, in the more than type, 
more than 0 because 0 is the lower limit more than 0 or 100 and more than 5, 10, 15, 20 so on these are the cumulative frequencies of more than type. Now, after making the cumulative frequencies of less than and more than type you have to plot the graph. See here again O y axis number of students O x axis we will take the class interval of marks. According to the class interval given we will divide the axis 5, 10, 15, 20 equal divisions till 40 we need the data till 40 is the upper limit. So, we will divide it till 40 here. Vertical axis the frequencies are given and the frequencies here this is as we have taken into percentage. So, divided into 10, 20, 30, 40 till 100 clear. Now, on the basis of this data we will plot the points. I will tell you how to plot the points. First, we will plot, plot the points for less than curve and then more than. Now, less than 5, there are 4. So, we will take the point here 5 and less than 5, there are 4. So, this is the first point. Less than 10, cumulative frequency is 10. So, 10 and here second point. Then, less than 20, there are 30, 20 and we will take here point 30. Then less than 25, they are 55, 25 here and 55 here, right. Then 77 for the next one, this is 77, then 95 and then last one is 100. This is 40 and this is 100, right. And when we join the points, first we will plot the points and then we will join the points with a freehand curve. This curve will give you less than ujjayiv and the lower end will join with the axis by the dotted line. Clear? Now, for more than ujjayiv, we will take this one 0, more than 0 or 100. So, more than 0 or so, read this more than 0, 0 more than 0, 100 first point, then next is 96, we will take 96 more, more than 5, then 96, then this one, then we go on getting the points like this and last one is more than 40 is 0, so more than 40 is 0, this is the point and we will join the all the points what you got and we get the curve, this is known as more than ujjayiv and this both the curves will intersect at one point because one is rising, one is declining. So, they will intersect at one point. So, this way we get the cumulative frequency curve and it is very easy to calculate the data here. Once you know the meaning of cumulative frequency, once you know the method of less than and more than you can easily calculate it and plot the points according to the data given here. So, this is the ujjayiv or less than and more than ujjayiv curve, clear? Now, another part of this chapter, I will explain it to you that is arithmetic line graph. Now, what is arithmetic line graph. This is very simple thing, this tells you that how when we plot the graph either for any description or any variable either for demand or supply or price or any variable whatever we are showing then we have to use O y and O x axis as you have been using for drawing a diagram. Now, what is actually O y and O x axis? This is clear with the help of arithmetic line graph. Now, first I will tell you what does it mean? It shows changes in one variable in comparison to the change in some other variable. So, it involves two variables. Now, what is line graph? It shows changes in one variable 
due to the change in or in comparison to the change in another variable. This means that there are two variables, one is independent and one is dependent. For example, here when we are taking marks and number of students, marks is independent variable and dependent variable is number of students. That means x and y, if suppose x is independent, y is dependent, then we say that x is dependent on y, x is independent variable and y is dependent variable. Same way when we say that when price changes, demand also changes. So, here demand is changing due to change in price. So, which is the independent variable over here? Price or demand? When we say demand is changing due to change in price, so demand is the dependent variable and as price is responsible for change in demand, price is considered independent variable. So, in this way the two variables are used in comparison and this arithmetic line graph that involves two variables to show the comparison. Now, we first see the format of line graph. Now, on a graph paper, this is constructed on a rectangular coordinate. Now, in the graph paper, we divide the axis to four parts like this. This makes four quadrants, four parts, quadrant 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, here this vertical is known as OY and this is called OX. When we move from here to here, all the values are positive. Same way when we move from here to here, this is 0. When we move from here to here, this side, right hand side, all the values are positive as it is shown over here by, by plus sign. The other side, when we move from 0 to x, all the values are negative and same way all the values are negative here. When we are plotting the graph, normally this is used because here x is positive as well as y is positive. When we make the graph, we are using O y O x in which all the values are positive and if we have to show any negative value, then we move this side. In the second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive, this is positive, this is negative. In the third quadrant, x is negative, this is negative and y is also negative. And the fourth one, x is positive and y is negative. So, in this only both the value variables are positive. So, these are four quadrants and in these quadrants coordinated axis is right angle lines. All the right angle lines are known as coordinate axis. X axis is called, this is called abscissa, Y axis is called coordinate axis and point of intersection this one is known as zero point or point of origin. And here quadrant 1, both variables are positive values, quadrant 3, both variables are negative values and in quadrant second and fourth, one variable has positive value and the other has negative value. So, this is the arithmetic line graph and on the basis of this, we plot the values of different variables. Clear? After this, children, I will tell you one more thing which is the last part of this chapter and this is line graph or time series graph, right? This is another form of diagram. Now, time series graph, that means graph which is showing the time distribution, that is known as time series graph. The value of variables change from one time period to another. In this, especially the time period is taken into consideration. When with the help of graph, we are showing the description of any particular time period, then time series graph is normally preferred for that. So, in this, the value of variables change from one time period to 
another. Study of changes over time is time series analysis. When we study the changes over time, this is known as time series analysis and information arranged over a period time is termed as time series. Information gathered or arranged over a time period, that means time period means 2001, 2002, 2003, what are the values or what are the variables in different time periods, then it is known as time series and when we are doing the study of the time series, then it is known as time series analysis. And the graph, when we are plotting the time series on a graph paper, then it is known as time series graph, right. Now, I will give you the example and with the help of